welcome uh, uh, the brother, uh, district governor and the past district governor, all the friends of what happens. With all that said, we're going to start with the national anthem. Oh, say you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, love bombs bursting in air, gave proof to the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star stand. Son and Holy Spirit, Amen. O Lord our God, who hold together the universe in your power and governed by your divine and almighty will, you have assigned to each nation its boundaries. You have conferred special blessings on our pious nation, granting it the knowledge of your truth, leading it to the light of the true faith, and bringing forth from it great fathers and teachers of the church. You kept it free for centuries by your divine grace. You preserved and saved it when enslaved, and you restored it once again to a life of freedom. To yourself, O Master, accept our prayers of thanksgiving for its liberation and rebirth. Give rest to the souls of our fathers and brethren who nobly fought for the faith and country and died with glory, or were slain, or hanged, or perished in captivity, together with the souls of all who have been well pleased with you from the beginning of time. Make us all worthy of freedom. Preserve us in peace and concord. Guide us to every good work that is pleasing to you. Keep in peace and concord every authority and power in the nation and speak good things to their hearts for your church and all your people. For you are the Prince of Peace and Savior of our souls, and to you we ascribe glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Father Nick, Brother Governor, Past District Governor, <coughs> Brothers and Sisters of a Happy Family, Greek Independence Day National Holiday, celebrate annually in Greece on March 25th, commemorating the start of the war of the Greek Independence in 1821. It coincides with the Greek Orthodox Church celebration of the Annunciation of Theotokos, when Archangel Gabriel appeared to Mary and told her that she would bear the Son of God. The Byzantine fire fell to the Turks in 1453, and the Greeks remained under the Ottoman rule for nearly 400 years. During this time, their language, their religion, and their sense of identity remain strong. The Greek revolt was precipitated on March 25, 1821, when Bishop Germanoso Patras raised the flag of revolution over the monastery of Hagia Lavra in Peloponnese. The cry of freedom or death became the motto of the revolution. The Greeks experienced early success on the battlefield including the capture of Athens in 1822 by fighting and suit. In 1827, Athens and most of the Greek Isles have been recaptured by the Turks. Just as the revolution appeared to be on the verge of failure, Great Britain, France, and Russia intervened in the conflict. The Greek struggle had elicited a strong sympathy in Europe, and many leading intellectuals have promoted the Greek cause, including the English poet Lord Byron. At the naval battle of Navarino, the 
combined British, French, and Russian forces destroyed the Ottoman Egyptian fleet. The revolution ended in 1829 when the Treaty of Ed Edirne established the independent Greek state. The celebration of the Greek Independence Day, towns and villages throughout Greece hold the school flag parade during which school children march in tradition with the Greek traditional Greek customs and carry the Greek flags. Flags. There is also armed forces parade in Anthos. Fraternally Kostas Bitskakis. Thank you, Gustav. We have nobody from the uh, from the uh, DOP uh, for the Donors District Governor. You'd like to say a couple words? Yes, it's a great honor and respect to acknowledge these fine troops that have done so much to hold the Allied forces intact. And in doing so, they fought with bravery and some of them giving their ultimate cause, that is death. They have uh, given so much in holding back the Allied forces. And as Winston Churchill once said, the Greeks fight like heroes. The heroes fight like Greeks. May their memories be written journal. Stamis. Welcome. Dear Reverend Father Nicholas Kotsis, past District Governor, Lieutenant Governor Dimitri Papayulio, a hemp of Governor Evans Ferris, Chapter President Kostas Butchakakis, and fellow Hepans and Phil Hellenes. Once again, we are gathered at the foot of this statue of this city's namesake, Demetrius Ypsilanti, which is flanked by our old glory and the stripes and cross of the Greek flag. This is the only place in, Amer in America to fly the Greek flag 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year on municipal U.S. land are here to honorably respect the occasion of the day of the announcement by the Greek people to their oppressors of 400 years, the Ottoman Empire, and to the world that they were proclaiming their independence. We also are honoring our sister cities in Greece of Napoleon and Argoli. In 1928, the Order of AHEPA, American Hellenic Educational Progressive Association, after a national effort of donations and collections, gifted this beautiful marble statue to this great city, and at its dedication was surrounded by thousands of well-wishers and celebrities. Those present at the dedication included Michigan Governor Fred W. Green, Council General De Pasta, George De Pasta of Greece, Congressman Earl C. Michener, and Archbishop Damaskinos of Greece, President Charles McKinney of McKinney Hall, the Normal College, recited the ceremonies. Immediately after the talk by Governor Green, the Greek national anthem was played, then Dean Alphonse, Supreme President of the AHEPA presented to the city of Ypsilanti the marble bust made by Greek sculptor Christopher Nastas. In 1995, <laughs> the statue was removed and restored and rededicated with support from the AHEPA. Attending the rededication were AHEPA members as well as representatives from the Ypsilanti Foundation of and well as Representative Lynn Rivers, representatives of the cities of Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti. <laughs> now what I'm about to say here was pure coincidence and not premeditated 
I just wanted to bring out some facts about the statue. But being today when we celebrated the cross at, the, at church today, I found it quite a coincidence of what I'm about to say. I would, re I would be remiss to bring to your attention the historic water tower, which stands majestically and shadows over the flags in the statue. The tower was designed by William Coates and located on the highest point in Ypsilanti and was built in 1890. And it may be noted that during the construction, and I'm quoting from Wikipedia, hoping to protect themselves from injury, the builders made at least four crosses in the stonework over the west door, an elaborate but difficult to find Greek cross on the east side and two inside the water tower. Tradition has it that these builders were of the Masonic order, and I'll point out the crosses right over the, uh, the keystone of the arch. If you look just above, you'll see the cross. The date of March 25th was deliberately chosen for it is the feast date of the angel Gabriel's appearance to the Virgin Mary and the announcement of the incarnation of the Son of God. Quote, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit to a yoke of slavery. Galatians 5.1. As our own Patrick Henry's proclaiming the give me freedom or give me death declaration of independence 46 earlier in March 23, 1775, steered our own patriots, so did this announcement made by Bishop Irmanos of Old Patras by blessing and raising the Greek banner at Aya Lavra to the oath of liberty or death did stir the Greek people. 400 years of slavery from the fall of Constantinople and the Byzantine Empire in 1453 and the eventual conquering of a huge part of Europe by the Ottoman Turk to years of revolt and the many attempted uprisings led ultimately to the March 25th proclamation of 1821. And the Greek people, along with millions of other people, suffered great atrocities. An article from the Ypsilanti Press, which I was unable to locate the date, refers to the horrors of the 400 years of slavery as follows. Quote, in Constantinople, where Mahmoud, known as the Butcher, strangled the most illustrious Greek in the city, picked 10 members of the Greek church, and on Easter Sunday, hung them over the palace gate and turned soldiers loose upon Christians to hack them to pieces. This city's naming was made in honor of General Demetrius Ypsilanti, whose family name had long been known to the world as princes in exile, some in Russia, others in Romania and Moldova. Continuing from the Ypsilanti Press, quote, a courageous, daring, imaginative general who served his country well and with honor. But the exploit that excited the world at that time was at Autobus, which, after three days with a force of 3,000 men, was able to defeat the Turks, defeat the Turks' force of 30,000 men, and was a story to shake the world in which inspired Judge Woodard to offer the name Ypsilanti, and which was chosen by two other original landowners and founders of the city, John Stewart and William W. Harwood, after their offerings of two other names. It should be noted that the War of Independence lasted for a long nine years, 1821-1829. It was a long, bloody fight of the children whose forebearers of over 2,000 years ago gave birth to this world, the government of the people, a freedom known as democracy, and brought forth a warehouse of new knowledge in the sciences, math, history, literature, and medicine, and the alphabet, alphabet the gamma. And their mark has been left on us here as we gathered, we are gathered under the guarantee 
of our Constitution to speak freely and meet in peace. Respectfully, Nicholas Stamos, past president of HEPA 195. Bravo. Bravo, Skaldiria. Fantastic. Bravo. Fantastic. Ευχαριστούμε όλους. Ευχαριστούμε. Μπράβο. Μπράβο, κύριε Πρόεδρε. Let's get a picture of